What's up everyone? This is KM Frequency here. I know I've been mentioning the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus in my previous review a lot and I'm excited to show it to you here. The newly released Galaxy Tab S8 Plus is Samsung's middle of the road device released alongside the new flagship, the S8 Ultra and its smaller twin, the Galaxy Tab S8. The Tab S series is a direct competitor to Apple's iPad. It is probably one of the most feature rich tablets available with probably a value that I believe far exceeds its competitors. The Galaxy Tab S series usually goes under the radar compared to the others and I think it deserves more attention. I want to give a clear look at the S8 Plus and why I use it as my primary tablet. There's something about the Galaxy Tab S series that just keeps me coming back and I'm going to get into all that here. Each of the major tablets have something to offer to the table every year and it's nice to have this competition going for consumer choice. Can the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus pull all of you the same way like it did for me over the others? We'll find out. So let's get into it. The first thing I'm going to do is start with what it looks like and it looks exactly like the previous model literally one to one not a single difference at all it has the exact dimensions screen size aluminum unibody frame camera placement etc to the galaxy tab s7 plus right along with the darkened area where the pen is held for charging which was expected in the first place i don't expect the form factor of the tablet to change much when it works it comes in three colors silver graphite and pink gold not much on the color choice front but it probably won't matter too much when you might end up slapping a case on it anyway the weight is carried over as well, it's just as light as it ever was, weighing just 1.27 pounds. It carries a beautiful 12.4 inch Super AMOLED display, and as you know, Samsung OLED displays do not disappoint. With a refresh rate of 120Hz, just like most other premium tablets, you get a fantastic display on par or better than their competitors. The resolution is a very wide 1752 by 2800 which would more likely favor a landscape mode for most of your use, but it didn't bother me too much when using it portrait maybe a bit for extended periods. The brightness of the screen is a good 500 nits. The SA Plus is easily readable in bright conditions outside without needing to squint to use it. It has a quad speaker setup that sounds good, but I did hear some crackling at high volumes, which was a bit of a letdown. It would be nice for most companies to have a speaker setup that sounds great without headphones because sometimes you just wanna play something out loud without sticking something in or on your ears. It comes equipped with Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, with only an 8GB configuration with storage sizes from 128GB to 256GB with an option to expand the storage with a micro SD card up to 1TB. The price for these is $899 and $999 respectively. There are also two cameras on the back with an ultra wide angle lens, a 13 megapixel primary sensor and a 12 megapixel front facing lens. The S8 Plus also has the addition of a 10,090mAh battery installed to provide some long lasting battery life. Of course on Galaxy tablets, what's installed is not iOS or Windows, but a modified version of Android. In this case, a modified version of Android 12 called One UI. I have discussed it in some of my previous videos and its ability to be customized in whatever way you want. Samsung stuffed so many features into One UI that everything you can change and modify can't be packed into this video. It's good enough in a smartphone, but I think it takes it one step further on a tablet interface. They have come a long way from TouchWiz. Long gone are times of slow updates and poor optimization. Apps can be used in full screen with both landscape and portrait mode. They scale, not always perfect, but definitely not distracting or unusable. You probably wouldn't notice a difference from apps that can or can't scale. You can change fonts and themes with good lock, lock screen styles, and much more. You have your standard movable widgets on the home screen, the ability to create folders and change your launcher to something different from One UI like Nova, so you can get a bit more customization there. The possibilities are endless. Included with the customization comes with an enhanced workflow like using split screen and setting preset groupings for those apps. When you click the preset, it will automatically snap both apps exactly as you created them when you first set up the split windows. You can even set one app as a pop-up while three others are running behind it. On top of that, you can make that app that you set up as a pop-up transparent so you can easily view the others behind it. Most of these features I mentioned are not available on the iPad. Those available, like split screen capabilities, are not used to this degree. Of course, Windows Slate can be customized more so, but you would have to dig deep into menus and download different programs, which becomes a tedious process for your average consumer. For a tablet, One UI is more touch friendly and approachable as an interface. Speaking of which, you can't describe One UI on the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus if you don't mention one of its underrated features, Samsung DeX. This is the greatest strength of the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus. For those of you that want total productivity with the Galaxy Tab, you have an option to activate a feature called Samsung DeX. It allows you to have a desktop-like interface similar to what you would have on your standard laptop or desktop. 
Using Samsung DeX on the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus is an upgrade from where it started with their phone line. Instead of having to use an external display to access it, you can do everything from your tablet. It's more helpful to have the Samsung Book Cover keyboard or a combination of a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard to take full advantage of it. I have the Slim Cover keyboard here and it's mostly because it came for free as a bonus for pre-ordering. I use it as the cover for my tablet even though I don't use the keyboard much. It is relevant for me to use in this video to show you how Samsung DeX works. You can open more than the three apps you can snap in the standard tablet mode. These apps all run simultaneously, just like they would on a PC. On top of that, you can type up documents, modify slideshows, or just propping up your tablet while you're sitting instead of lying down. This is where the SA Plus shines because of its large display. Split screen windows fit just enough not to feel like apps are squeezed together. It still runs just the apps limited to Android, but you can open separate windows and resize them as you see fit. I would liken the interface to a Chromebook, but much better optimized and easier to operate. The option to use your tablet in this mode brings added versatility to your standard affair. You would be hard pressed to find a device that seamlessly can switch between modes. Okay, I admit. I found myself using this mode way more often than I thought I would, considering how I use my own tablet. This means I did use the keyboard more often, which I usually don't do, but it has saved my life a couple of times work-wise. For consumers that will use this tablet as a complement or a replacement for a computer, it's a multitasking beast. All this while not completely destroying your wallet and still being able to use the S Pen as well. The S Pen is where other tablet manufacturers should start to take notes. The S Pen is not only one of the most feature packed styluses, it comes with the tablet itself at no extra charge. Samsung is the only one of the major tablet manufacturers that do this and I'm not sure why they don't get enough credit for it. So right from the start, you get to take full advantage of the entire tablet experience by simply purchasing the device. However, just because it comes free doesn't mean it's lacking in substance either. Samsung has refined the S Pen to exactly where they want it. Their estimates have reduced response time for writing with the pen. It has dropped to 2.8 milliseconds of latency for the AMOLED displays on the S8 Plus and the Ultra. In contrast, the regular S8 has 6.2 milliseconds because of its LCD. That's not to say the LCD on the S8 is bad or for that matter noticeable, but it is a definite improvement nonetheless. Because of that, writing feels excellent and it doesn't feel like your pen strokes lag when quickly growing across the screen with your pen. Included are shortcuts with the button that allow you to press and hold to open apps, play and pause music and videos, and push the button to activate air gestures or as Samsung calls it, air actions. With the gestures, you can raise and lower the volume by pressing the button on the pen and moving the pen upwards or downwards, along with unlocking your tablet with Smart Lock. Some of the gestures seem look a bit silly, but they do work, and many of them are convenient. With all that being said, it will take a pretty decent processor to run all this. That brings me to the performance. The Galaxy Tab S8 Plus with all its bells, whistles, and numerous tools under its belt runs exceptionally well for an Android tablet. Slowdowns and lag are mostly non-existent with general usage, even when throwing the most strenuous task at it. You could be running a 4K video, playing a game, and browsing the web without this tablet getting affected too much. That's the thing with this tablet. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 didn't manage to blow our minds with performance, and from some metrics, it even tends to be weaker in some areas than the previous chip. I didn't notice any of that for my use with it. Everything feels just as fast as my last tablet, the S7, and almost mirrors it one to one in terms of speed and general performance. In that case, you can say that the Tab S8 line is a disappointment in being an upgrade from the previous model regarding how it runs because we didn't see much of a significant gain. That is not to say this tablet runs terribly. The S7 ran terrific, and so does this one. It just didn't get any major upgrades from the last one. That would mean that if you already purchased an S7 Plus, you won't find a case in upgrading unless you're looking for a larger display and the addition of an OLED screen as an upgrade from the S7. If you are interested in buying this tablet, whether as an upgrade or a new purchase, you will not be disappointed on the speed front. There's also an option to add extra virtual RAM in exchange for storage space to give your device a bit more memory and increased performance that may be needed for some more intensive apps. On another note, there has been some controversy concerning the Galaxy Tab S8 and the S22 series dealing with Samsung's game optimizing service, throttling core speeds when running some apps to prevent the tablet from overheating. Samsung has mentioned that they will be sending out an update for the S22, but not yet for the Tab S8. I don't think of it as a big deal to most consumers because most people won't even notice what's happening. It is important enough though that I figured I should mention it to give a complete picture. I never really felt the tablet heat up anyway, and that very much could be why, but generally I only ever experienced it while charging and maybe running a game here and there, which changes topics to the battery. Compared to my last review of the Surface Pro 8, on the tablet front, the battery life of the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus fares a whole lot better. I got to about 8-9 to nine hours screen on time before I needed a recharge. If I push it enough by turning the refresh rate down to 60Hz and lowering the brightness slightly, I can squeeze out about 10-11 to 11 hours. 
For those of you that would like to know about the standby time, I got about 2 days and 19 hours, and I know I can get much longer than that. When I left my tablet idle, my battery would barely drop a percentage. At most, I lost up maybe 1 or 2% overnight. Battery life is vital to using a tablet because they are meant for on the go as I said before. They aren't meant to be plugged in all the time because that would defeat the purpose. This is a great battery range for a tablet running a 12.4 inch screen and a max brightness of 500 nits. The S8 Plus also has the option of fast charging up to 45 watts. If fast charging isn't your thing and you want to protect your battery health better, you have options for preserving the battery life by limiting the charge to 85% and turning off fast charging. When running Samsung DeX and having multiple windows up, the battery did drain a little quicker. This is expected when multitasking to this degree, but it is something to keep in mind if you plan to use it as a laptop replacement. The Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Plus is a beautiful tablet that you can't go wrong in purchasing. I like to describe this tablet as a jack of all trades and a master of none. Or better yet, a jack of all trades and a master of some. Or most. Well, whatever, you all get the point. People always act like that's a bad thing. The way I see it, the Tab S8 Plus has value. It can do some of the things a Surface can do, and most, if not all the things an iPad can. It meets kind of somewhere in the middle. The question that needs to be asked is, can it accomplish the task you're trying to throw at it? 90% of the time, the answer is yes. And can it be purchased without bringing the bank too much compared to the other premium tablets in this category? Absolutely. As I said, that's not to say this tablet is cheap by any means. $900 is still $900. But comparing it to its competition, I think it's worth taking a look at this or its smaller sibling, the Tab S8, if screen size and an LCD are not a problem for you. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like, comment, and think about subscribing. I'll see you all in the next video.